Hey guys, welcome to Cool Bits, where we point out our favorite small moments from popular and maybe not so popular games. These cool bits might be a secret, an easter egg, or just a small detail that really resonated with us. This time, we'll be taking a look at the title screen secrets of Mario Paint for the Super Nintendo. Now, as you may already know, Mario Paint isn't really a game at all. Instead, it was more of a tool for creating all kinds of digital artwork, but what made it really stand out was its sense of fun. And that fun begins right away on the title screen where Mario darts around and even shows off a few of his moves. Now normally, you'd simply use the cursor to click on Mario and start the game. But if you take some time to explore, you might find that the Mario Paint logo isn't just there for looks, as every one of the letters causes something unique to happen if you click on it. Take M, for example, which causes Mario to shrink as if he got hit by an enemy. But don't worry, you can fix him right back up by clicking on it again, just as if he got a power-up. Then there's a the first A, which straight up just drops away before returning a few seconds later. But if you time it just right, it'll even take Mario with it too. Poor guy didn't even see it coming! Clicking on R causes it to make a weird baby-like sound while growing an eye and walking around. Yeah, that one's a bit odd. But check out what happens if we take that same baby sound and play it backwards at half the speed. Nintendo. Yeah, it's some dude saying Nintendo. That letter R keeps getting stranger and stranger. The first I briefly inverts many of the colors causing Mario to look like an old man. And it also makes the music sound a little weird. If you're looking for a little more action, try clicking on the O to turn it into a bomb which soon explodes, temporarily taking all the letters on screen out with it. But that's not all, because listen to what happens next. What you just heard is actually what's known as Totaka's Song, a simple 19-note melody hidden by the game's composer, Kazumi Totaka, in most of the games he's worked on. And this is actually one of his earliest appearances, which is pretty cool. Next up is P, which causes a nice little landscape to appear set to a bouncy little tune. And is populated by all kinds of objects that make between 1 to 3 unique sounds when you click on them, like flowers. Cars. Trains. Dogs. Planes. And even UFOs. But every once in a while, you might also spot a shooting star. And if you're quick enough, you can even click on it too, which will cause a ton of objects to rain down in the background, as well as making a weird harp sound. Now after P, we had the second A, which causes Yoshi to run across the screen, complete with a percussion track that's added to the music, just like when you wrote them in Super Mario World. Next up is the second eye, which causes all the text to wobble while giving the music a wobbly feel, too. Alright, we're getting close to the end, so it's perhaps fitting that N causes the credits to appear, and it too causes an extra drumline to be added to the music, which is a nice touch. But the credit sequence hides another secret. When you see the programmer Noraki Teramoto appear, hold down the right mouse button while clicking the letter N again to turn off the credits. Now when you start the game, you'll have access to several new features. These include right-clicking to undo, right-clicking to select the highlighted color in the stamp editor, as well as unlocking four new rotations for the stamps. Pretty crazy, huh? Finally, there's T, which makes the music a little slower and laid back, while changing the cursor into a pen that allows you to draw all over the title screen with colorful lines. See, you don't even have to start the game proper to begin your career as an artist. And speaking of starting the game, there's still one more secret left. So when you're finally done playing around, you'll probably want to click on Mario to actually get started, and here's what normally happens. Yep, the game even treats you to a short intro movie before sending you off on your own, which is pretty cool by itself. But every once in a while, you'll get a version that's just a little different. Check it out. It's pretty clear a lot of creativity was put into Mario Paint's title screen, which is a perfect fit for a game based entirely around being creative. And that wraps up this episode of Cool Bits or Mario Paint. Now let us know if you have any cool bits of your own by posting in the comments, and we may feature it in a future episode. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more cool bits and everything gaming.